going on guys? This is D Rock over at One Hive Invicta slash 2.0 with a brand new series. Sorry, that was my dog in the background. Anyways, um so I got a brand new series for you guys. It's gonna be called The Little Things, and it's basically going to show very similar to Tax and War, but how the little things can impact in effect a three star versus a two star or a high star a high percentage one star um, i'm going to be analyzing an attack by one of our members days and then i'm going to be showing how i slightly tweak his plan i'm going to give him credit for the initial plan because i use the exact same thing pretty much except that it's a couple things differently in the execution that made it all the, made all the world the difference Okay, so he did a Goho with an, a regular lure. The first thing that he did was have two giants to go for the lure, which is fine. He didn't know I was in the CC. It was the very first attempt. Um, but because it's heavy, I ended up only bringing one giant. Um, nothing you could do there. It didn't really impact the raid. But the first thing that was done that I changed was the deployment of his distraction troops for his two witches. So what happened was, because he dropped him so soon, the cannon and the archer towers killed all of his barbarians before the witches were even dropped, so the witches and the skeletons ended up being very vulnerable. The second thing was how early he dropped his queen. So because he dropped his queen so early, she was taking out all of those trash buildings, and because those witches have a sort of ranged attack, they're going to move in and take out the closest defense while those skeletons are doing work. So while she's taking out these defenses, the witches are going to creep forward more and more and more until they're going to be in range. The skeleton and those witches are going to be in range of these mortars here. And because those mortars are helping that dragon with the distraction troops, that dragon's going to end up taking all of his witches down, and even a few of his wizards. So that was the first thing. The second thing was, and the golem placement was fine, that didn't end up being a big deal. The wall breakers failed, but that didn't end up breaking it either. One thing I would have changed was I would have waited a hair, a fraction of a second difference to drop that king, because the wall wasn't broken. So now... Now that he's faster than those golems, he's out front of the golem, and he's taking the brunt of all of the defense around that area, so he didn't live as long as he could. Um, this part, I'm not going to go over because the exact same thing I pretty much did. The only difference I had was I used a giant to tank, and I used more of a two-finger drop rather than kind of the, the surgical approach that he had. I'm not going to go through it. It ended up being a high percentage two-star. So very nice attack. I just changed a few things and ended up making the world a difference. So going down to 22. So I did this very similar. I dropped one giant though because I knew it was a very heavy CC. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit, bring it up top. And one thing I did now, so I only have one barb, another barb, one witch, and then another witch a couple, like a fraction of a second later. So the skeletons are going to constantly drop. And they're not going to clump up. And the dragon will always be distracted. Now I drop my queen. Let them stay out back a little bit more. I, one of them goes down here. But no, actually no. Both of the witches survive. So that was excellent. Um, notice how I haven't dropped my king yet. I'm waiting for that wall to crack open. Once it does, I drop the king, the queen finishes the funnel, and now he's going in. The same exact jump, and at this point the queen's down, the king is still up, and here I've already started my hog deployment. So while he ran out of time, because those slight tweaks and how f much faster I did the attack, because I knew what my troops were going to be doing at what times, I shaved off an entire minute off the attack. So I used the exact same plan, but I just did it much faster with much more anticipation for what's going to happen. Um, that can always make or break you. So 
I'm just going to speed through it because really this base is wrecked at this point. I have tons of cleanup troops around and the base is just done for. So um, I hope you guys like this. It's a little bit different, um, a diff different spin off the cleanup videos that you guys are used to seeing. Show me in the comments whatever your feedback is. You know, I can take if it sucked, let me know. If there's different things I can be doing, let me know as well. And uh, I'll work to get you guys.